Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. This here may be catching your attention. That is the strong tropical wave that'll move across the Caribbean. I want to show you what I'm seeing uh, with all of the computer models, but also what I'm seeing in the environment for the chance this develops as it rides through the Caribbean. I also want to get into some dust out there. We'll get into the Saharan dust, take a look at the winds, the circulation uh, in this system, and the potential of a second system that may form back behind it. That, and we'll get into the uh, wave height. So you see this blob here, that's moved in. That is a tropical uh, wave that has uh, given us some rain last night. Grenada, for example, we've had some heavier rain. We've had scattered showers and storms around over toward uh, parts of uh, Trinidad and Tobago up through St. Lucia, Barbados. We had a bit of uh, uh, rain, St. Fitz of the Grenadines. This is gonna march its way closer to the ABC Islands right through here. Now, it's gonna lose a little Little steam in the short term and then down the road later this week it may develop. You see it flaring up here. There's no well-defined or no real circulation in this I should say. It's just an area of rainstorms uh, that is uh, passing by. It did flare up a little bit. These kind of fluctuate uh, storm systems or disturbances. They kind of breathe at different times of the day. They'll, they'll look different and this is going to work its way gradually toward the west and west northwest over the next few days. So we have that one here but uh, catching my attention, a couple waves out here and some stronger ones that will come off the coast of Africa. And uh, the early indications are that some of these may develop as they approach the Caribbean. So as we work our way into July, it's going to get more active, no doubt about that, especially out here. Usually this time of year, we look closer to home, but once we get into July, we're going to start to see some of these tropical waves developing. That's not, not in a scary way. I'm going to track it for us. These uh, all don't hit us, but it's normal that as we get into July, deeper into the hurricane season, we are going to start to get more and more areas of development in different spots we'll have to keep an eye on as we uh, continue through the season. What's, what's different this season is the Eastern Pacific, historically quiet, one of the quietest starts all time. The hurricane season starts on this side, May 15th, and on the Eastern Pacific side, there has been nothing out there. Now, let's get back to this. I want to do a few things. I want to get into the small picture and then I want to widen it out and show you a few more areas that may try to develop. So this is today. Now as this tropical disturbance moves in, you see there's not a lot with it right here. This is the American model. A lot of the models in pretty good agreement. I'll touch on that. And you see here in the short term, uh, not much rain with it once we get past where it is right now. This is by tomorrow afternoon. So near the ABC Islands, rain chance isn't going to be too high. It's later this week, it flares up again. So we have the rain and storms now, then it kind of dies down a little bit. And then you see here, here's Jamaica. Cayman Islands, Belize, Honduras, Nicaragua, Yucatan, and Mexico. Here's Cuba. By Thursday, it may start to develop somewhat. Now, what happens here is just as it starts to develop and approach uh, Belize and the Yucatan of uh, Mexico, well, it starts to run into land. These need water to uh, uh, kind of uh, fuel them. And because while it starts to develop, then it runs into land, it's going to lose that. So uh, the development chance is not too terribly high, uh, but there is a chance a tropical storm tries to develop or a tropical depression and works its way over here. This is by the time we get into Saturday. So uh, that's what I'm going to be watching as this moves across. And then you see more action sitting right over here. So that is catching my attention. So let me uh, widen out the picture here and start with this. The first tropical disturbance that's moving through right now in the Eastern Caribbean. Well, what do the models do? The European model says, hey, this is not going to be a storm because as this moves toward the Yucatan, it's going to run out of uh, uh, water. It's going to kind of run into land and it won't have enough time to develop. The American model does have this developing into about a tropical depression. The Canadian model has this becoming a tropical storm saying, hey, this is going to move over water, the Bay of Campeche a little bit longer, kind of lift up here toward northeast Mexico. That'll give us some time to develop. The German model, the icon model, has no development. Now, uh, there's a good chance it slides toward Belize and the Yucatan. Nothing alarming at this time, just monitoring for signs of development, a much lesser chance that it would make any curve up to the uh, north. So models kind of split. It just depends on if it could stay over water long enough to develop. So it's not a given it does develop, has my attention. I am watching that. Now here's the bigger picture. So it's this area 
again here, there's also a little disturbance coming out of the Bahamas. That'll give us a better chance of rain in Bermuda. A small chance that tries to develop. So this here is Wednesday. So that's kind of a second area right there. And then you see by Thursday, uh, what happens? This is kind of getting through the week. Jamaica, I'll be watching us through the week. So thank you for spreading the word about this channel. Uh, we'll see how close some of this rain gets. But as of now, it looks like by Friday, some of this rain would be working into Belize, Honduras, Yucatan, and Mexico, even Nicaragua close to the Cayman Islands, and then we'll be watching this as it kind of lifts its way toward the Bay of Campeche. The longer it's able to kind of stay over water, the better chance it has of developing. And then looking down the road, this is on Saturday, Look at that right there. I was talking about the other tropical waves that may develop. By the time we get into the weekend, there could be some sort of system or at least a strong tropical disturbance approaching the Eastern Caribbean. Almost all of the models are picking up on this. So we're watching development here. I want to be very clear. The chance of development here and then the chance of development by the time we get into the weekend, there could be some sort of system anywhere from Trinidad up toward Barbados and then trying to move in. As of now, I'm not seeing anything super strong, but definitely the models are picking up on organization of some sort of tropical depression or tropical storm. The potential of that near the Eastern Caribbean by this weekend, and then we'll see if this kind of shoots into the Caribbean or kind of does a little bit more of a curve up to the north. So wait and see on that. Nothing has even developed at this point. This is normal, starting to see a lot of areas we need to uh, track, and I'll do so. Now, uh, there's some dust out there. It's not, not the biggest area of dust. We had a lot of dust a month or two ago. Uh, so just seeing some dust, this is normal as you go through the uh, tropical season. There'll be areas of dust. It could suppress some of the development. This here is not too terribly thick, though. This is by tomorrow, a little surge of dust. That is one of the reasons in the short term, I don't expect development out of this system. But as we work our way from tomorrow uh, into uh, the middle of the week, uh, well, tomorrow would be the middle of the week. As we work our way to Thursday, you see some of the dust up here in the northeastern Caribbean. But this area will be over toward Jamaica late week. So this dust is not too terribly thick, but the dust is all, always a variable I watch as we go through the hurricane season, those pockets of, of dry air. Now, the water. Water temperature is certainly conducive for development, 29 degrees Celsius to 84 degrees Fahrenheit, warmer in some spots, but short term, uh, there's some dry air around, so not seeing anything developing the next couple days, but once it works its way near Jamaica, that's when we'll start to see some signs of developing. And here's the wind shear. It's not just what's going on in the water or with the dust, it's also what's going on with the uh, winds up above our heads. Now this is on Thursday, on Thursday, I know this map is a little hard to see, here's Jamaica. Jamaica, this area would be just to the south of Jamaica. The wind shear, uh, which uh, wind shear is good for us in the hurricane season, that could rip apart systems. So wind shear is our friend, but most of that would be to the north. So the wind shear, as it moves closer toward Central America, the Yucatan of Mexico, the wind shear is actually a little bit less. Another reason we'll see some signs of development out of this as we get toward the uh, end of the week. Now, you can pick out this in some of the uh, winds here. This is later today, uh, kilometers an hour and miles per hour, both scales on your screen. So uh, I'll be uh, tracking that as we go throughout the season, different, uh, different units of measurement so we could uh, stay safe. Now, as we go forward and work our way into Thursday, this is Thursday jumping ahead, uh, breezier conditions for sure, some gustier winds at times, not seeing any signs of circulation. But then as we work our way here, let me stop the clock here. This is on our Friday evening. You see some of the winds, 80 kilometer uh, gust, uh, upwards of about 50 miles per hour. There could be some stronger gust in the Western Caribbean approaching the Yucatan and Belize, not necessarily an organized system and then we'll see those stronger winds as we work our way into uh, the Bay of Campeche. This would be by Saturday morning. If it stays over water longer, kind of lifts to the north, that would give it a better chance of developing, or else it'll just be kind of a sloppy system, a rainmaker that will move in for parts of Honduras, Belize, even watching Guatemala over toward Mexico. And then here, Look at this, this is by Sunday morning, right? So this is uh, into the uh, weekend, Sunday morning. See that spot right there? Here's Barbados, here's Trinidad. That spot right there, uh, some winds, uh, the potential of some sort of circulation developing, that's the second system that may try to develop 
and approach. Even if it doesn't develop, we're looking at some increased rain anywhere from Trinidad to the north. So I'm watching St. Lucia, I'm watching uh, Barbados, all of us, even up toward Antigua and Barbuda in case anything kind of curves into our direction. And you can see everything with the wave heights. As these disturbances move in, the waves start to kick around two to about three meters through the Caribbean, meters here, feet right here. So things are definitely getting choppier if you have any boating interest through the Caribbean, uh, really uh, not just today, but uh, over the next uh, few months, we're gonna kinda have to weave in between tropical waves and tropical systems. There's that little area I mentioned coming out of the Bahamas, lifting its way up toward Bermuda. Seas will be elevated in some of the Atlantic waters. And then you see here the elevated seas near Jamaica by Thursday, and then especially toward the end of the week in the central and western Caribbean, seas building to about three and a half uh, meters, so upwards of a uh, roughly 10 plus feet in spots off the uh, waters of the Yucatan of Mexico, Belize, Honduras. So elevated seas will be coming toward uh, uh, Rotan over toward uh, Providencia and uh, San Andres. So uh, a lot of a lot of uh, development to uh, watch for. Now, as far as the rain totals in the short term, this stuff is scattered. Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Haiti, the DR, Bahamas, Cuba, scattered showers and storms watching heavier rain that will try to lift over toward Bermuda. I'll touch on that in the uh, forecast in a second. Spotty showers and storms as we work our way from Jamaica back toward Puerto Rico. Not as much in the northeastern Caribbean still, Montserrat, Guadalupe, uh, but we have had some rain near Dominica with this tropical wave that has uh, moved in and some other locations locations. Three-day totals behind this tropical wave. Uh, we could see anywhere from about 25 millimeters to 75 millimeters of rain or one to three inches of rain. Not super high over the next few days. We're going to wait on that next disturbance that will be moving in. Higher totals though again in Guyana where we could get over 100 millimeters or four inches of rain. Scattered storms, El Salvador, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Panama, Nicaragua uh, watching for some flooding. And as we work our way toward Mexico, still those scattered showers around not as much northern sections of uh, Mexico, but we'll see what tries to develop later this week and uh, pushes our way. So definitely a busy pattern. Again, watching this blob here, that's the first spot riding through the Caribbean, and then that other area off the coast of Africa that may start to develop and approach this uh, weekend. So those are really the two areas that I'm uh, watching. You get to the northern sections of all of this, Atlantic region of Canada has been busy. There have been some thunderstorms around. We're gonna see a front pressing uh, by, so we'll have some fronts nearby that'll keep some instability in play. This is our Wednesday afternoon. That chance of some scattered showers uh, tomorrow, not as much. You see some of the storms over toward uh, Toronto, moving toward uh, the northeast of the U.S., and then starting to move, uh, move in again as we work our way into Thursday. So Jamaica, 30 to 40% chance, and we are hot. Falmouth, Montego Bay, it is steamy. Cayman Islands, about a 20% chance of rain for us. Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, I'll watch how close this tropical disturbance will get. We'll be on the edge of some heavier rain later this week, and I'll be breaking that down island by island as we go forward. Trinidad and Tobago, chance of some rain and storms around at times, and then we're gonna shift our attention to what's going on off the coast of Africa with that next tropical wave, same thing in Barbados, better chance of rain today. A lot of this has already panned out for today. St. Lucia with this tropical disturbance that has moved by Grenada too. We've already, we've already had some of the uh, areas of rain. St. Vincent in the Grenadines. So in between the tropical waves, the rain chance will be going down, back down to a 30% chance tomorrow in Martinique and Dominica tomorrow and Thursday. Rain chance will be trending down. 30 to 40% chance in Guadeloupe, 20 to 30% chance Antigua and Barbuda, 20 to 30% chance St. Kitts, Nevis and Montserrat, and about a 20% chance Anguilla and St. Bart's, 10 to 20% chance St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia, 30% chance of isolated storms in Puerto Rico, passing shower or a thunderstorm, uh, U.S. and British Virgin Islands, 30 to 40% chance across the Bahamas, a lot of that moisture lifting up toward Bermuda, Turks and Caicos, could, uh, we could get a passing shower, 40% chance of some scattered showers and storms in the Dominican Republic, get back toward Haiti, an isolated chance of a shower or storm a 40% chance in Belize. Belize, all eyes on this uh, tropical disturbance. I'll be watching that approaching later this week, and I'll be zooming down across Belize, Honduras, the Yucatan of Mexico. Uh, we'll get it very specific with rain totals or even any winds that may eventually come our way. 20 to 30% chance in Aruba, where you may get clipped by this tropical disturbance. I'm hoping it could spill over some showers for Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire. Guyana, rain chance on the higher side today, those pockets of flooding. 
trending down somewhat in uh, Suriname. Rain chance about 50% in Cuba. This is more in the way of those scattered showers and storms. Costa Rica and Panama, 60% chance isolated flooding. A 50% chance in Nicaragua. Nicaragua uh, back toward Honduras. I'll be watching this tropical disturbance that'll move closer later this week. 40 to 50% chance in the short term in Honduras. A 60% chance of scattered showers and storms. Guatemala, El Salvador, and about a 50% chance the next few days as we get back toward Mexico City. Rain chance about 60%, a little bit higher over toward the Yucatan and Mexico. Isolated 30% chance in Colombia, 30 to 40% chance in northern Venezuela. And that rain chance getting higher in Bermuda with that moisture lifting up, even some gustier winds and higher seas, that moisture lifting up from the Bahamas. So a strong tropical wave moving in, monitoring for, for some development. There are some areas of dust, and I'm watching the coast of Africa for that next system. A lot of the models are picking up on some development as that that one approaches the Eastern Caribbean. So those two spots have my attention. That's what I'll be tracking as we go over the next week or two. And things will, of course, get more and more active as we go throughout the month of July, which is what we expect this time of year. So got you covered storm by storm. Thank you for sharing this channel. Be safe and have a good rest of your day.